sound of, well, okay, nothing on screen right now because I have to click on that. Sorry about that. Anyway, sounds of James Sunderland furious. He has to find his wife again. Hopefully the game does not crash uh, as it did last time. We're starting off right where we crashed. This is the hallway. James is just yelling in frustration at being interrupted last time. Here's the map. I guess we probably don't really need this because we don't do much in this apartment. We're going to go down here. Uh, we're going to talk to Angela. Hopefully, again, who knows? The game could crash at any time. I guess that makes things tense. Makes things exciting. Who knows if the game will stop working? Let's pick this up. Let's pick, that's, let's pick that up. Angela would be right down here. Here we go. All right, Angela. Got to Give me that knife. Oh, it's you. Yeah, I'm James. Angela. Angela, okay. I don't know what you're planning, but there's always another way. Really? But you're the same as me. It's easier just to run. Besides, it's what we deserve. No, no, not like you. This map was having some problems during that cutscene. It's fine. It's fine. 
Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the music track we're hearing, I think it's called Theme of Laura, which is kind of odd because I don't think it actually plays when Laura's on screen. It seems more associated with Angela. All right, we got the coin. All right, so that means we got to go to the room with the desk. Oh, and while we're here, uh, when we played Born From a Wish, when we were in this room, we found a white bottle like this. We're going to take it now. We got the white chrism. Let's take a look at it. Glass bottle containing milky white anointing oil. So... Ernest wanted that because it seemed like he wanted to resurrect his daughter. We just happened to find it now. James is just going to take that with him. It's one of these special items needed for one of the endings. Also, since we're on a harder puzzle difficulty, there's a new, uh, new riddle on this desk. Like coins in the hazy aether tossed, our souls must buy their sinful weight to send to earth with lightness lost. To right the sins that they hath laid, when thrice in falling they intone, then happiness shall be thy own. The first note be not by the horned one rung, though it be there that all sins are sprung. Be sprung, I'm sorry. The bringer of life and the bringer of shame, the sins of the latter be even more tame. Though coming in the age one's wake, the formless one's soul in fear doth quake. The needless one, silent, with hungers all sated, it is least then in sin, with his lusts all abated. For the grave is the sinner, his place be appointed, and if he be lucky, may his soul be anointed. So this is a little, uh, obscure. Alright, so, this is the kind of thing that if you know the solution, then you sort of lurk, work backwards and try to figure out how it fits. I'll, I'm not entirely sure how it fits, but... Okay, so the souls are the coins are descending by their sinful weight, right? So it says to right the sins. I think it's I think it is the right the more right you are, then the heavier the sins. So left is lighter sins, right is heavier sins. So the first note be not by the horned one rung, though it be there that all sins would be sprung. So let's ignore that. The bringer of life and the bringer of shame. The sins of the latter be even more tame. The bringer of life is the prisoner because that one is a woman. The bringer of shame would be the snake because, you know, the whole Genesis story, you know, the story snake tells Adam and Eve to eat the, the fruit. They eat the fruit and they're like, oh, no, we're naked. Don't let God see. They're all embarrassed. So that's a snake. It says that the sins of the snake are tamer than the woman. So that would mean that the snake would be to the left of the prisoner. Though coming in the aged one's wake, the formless one's soul in fear doth quake. So, formless one would be an empty space. So, the, the old man, he has an empty space next to him. The needless one, silent with hungers all sated, is least then in sin with his lusts all abated. So, I guess this means the old man is the least sinful because he is old and thus has abated all of his lusts. He, does, he's not, he doesn't want a bone anymore because he's old. So that's that's how you would say it. That's how it should say. The needless one doesn't want a bone no more because he's too old to. The gravest of sinners, his place is appointed. So it says that the gravest of sinners, the rightmost, uh, is appointed. But I, I guess since the place is appointed, there's no one actually there yet. I think that's what this is. That's the closest thing I can figure out. So let's take a look at these coins. You know, for some reason... These coins, I noticed on the hard difficulty, uh, have, like, backsides. The reverse on this is an egg. I don't think they were there on the normal difficulty. Old man has a gravestone on the back. And uh, this snake has crescent moon. That doesn't seem like they have anything to do with this puzzle, though. All right. Um, prisoner. All right, where does prisoner go? Well, we said that on the rightmost, it, the place is appointed, which I guess means no one's theirs yet, so it's going to be blank. We'll put the uh, the prisoner, who we've been told is very sinful, right next to there. Right next to there. Um, then the snake, we were told, is less in sin than the prisoner, so we're going to put the snake to the left of the woman. 
the old man is least in sin, so he should go on the left. That unlocks it. Now again, I don't know if I'm right in my interpretation of that. I just I just looked up what the solution was and then tried to work backwards on that. So maybe I'm right or maybe I'm wrong about that. I'm not really sure. But that's the closest thing I could think of to what that might be. Oh, over here. Here's the ha here's the door that leads back to the um to Ernest's house. We can't go through that in the main game. Maria could, but we cannot. All right, so now I got that key. I need to unlock this door. I don't think the ASMR is any different in this version. Let me just save here because I'm going to do something that's probably foolish. I am going to try to fight Pyramid Head with the chainsaw. I don't have to do that. It's probably a bad idea. But, you know, we have it. We might as well check it out. Because, you know, Pyramid Head is actually a lot harder on, hard, on the hard difficulty. He wasn't a big deal on normal. He is kind of a big deal on hard. Now we're going to go in here. Pyramid Head is backyard wrestling with his friend. He's trying to powerbomb him. And they realize, oh, actually, that's harder to do in real life than on TV, so they give it up. Like, people have weird interpretations about what's happening there. They were He was trying to powerbomb his friend. Okay, on hard, Pyramid Head, much faster, much more aggressive. He's It's hard to get close to him, because he will swing that thing if I get anywhere near. So what I want to do is I want to wait until he starts going for the big sw the big overhead swing. Uh, like yeah. Now he's now he's going for it. Cuz that'll he'll it takes him long enough to do that for me to get around. I missed. You see, I have to not miss. I have to do do what I just did but not miss. Also, it still kills you in one hit. So messing up kind of means that you're restarting this fight. Getting him with the chainsaw slows him down. So... Uh, let me get... Eh, wasn't comfortable about that one. Oh, I was standing behind him. And as it turns out, that he gets... If it'll hit you, if you're behind him, it will do it. I needed to I needed to run around in a larger arc. How much health do I have by the way? Let me check my health items. 8 of those, 3 of those. Okay. He obviously can hit you for that with hits that will not be a one-hit kill. So I might need to replenish my health. But the big import the big problem, of course, is his big overhead swing. Let's try this again. Like I said, you don't have to do this. You can just like wait him out until he leaves. But what what's the fun in that? We gotta try to melee pyramid head. Now, here we go. That was actually a bit close. I didn't like that, and I missed him. So, none of that was good. Uh, it's too far away. Uh, da, 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 da. None of that now. Go 
wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Uh, I cho he's choking me. Okay, so he can choke you if he gets close. And, uh, you might have noticed... Hold on, let me get, get some distance away from him. There we go. You might have noticed that when he chokes you, his long black tongue comes out of his helmet. It only happens when he chokes. <laughs> oh, is he going? Is, are we done? I don't hear the siren, but he's leaving. We did it. James yells in victory. If you haven't seen that, he, James just does that if you stand still with the chainsaw. Okay, we did it. Great. I... I don't... I mean, maybe there was just a bug in the HD collection that we didn't hear the siren? That could be. Let me take a look at my health. It's fine. Alright, let's uh, go talk to Laura. And she's gonna be all snippy at us. And we now know why Laura is upset at James, because she feels... Oh, here we go. You! It was you, wasn't it? You're the one who stepped on my hand. I don't know. Maybe I did. What's a little girl like you doing here anyway? Huh? Are you blind or something? What's... what's that letter? None of your business. You didn't love Mary anyway! Oh, wait! How do you know Mary's name?! So, yep, that's, uh, that is, um, a professional act voice actress doing the voice of a child. Of course, now we know why, uh, Laura has a thing against, against James, because she knew Mary in the hospital and f feels that James, uh, wasn't treating her with the compassion that she needed. James, I guess, I guess James never noticed Laura in the hospital, uh. Just looking around, trying to think about, is there a save point somewhere? I don't remember where there is one, so we're gonna, we're gonna, hopefully we'll find one soon. Just a little paranoid about save points now. Let's go talk to Maria. Mary? No, you're not. Do I look like your girlfriend? No, my late wife. I can't believe it. You could be her twin. Your face, your voice, just your hair and clothes are different. My name is Maria. I don't look like a uh, ghost, do I? See? Feel how warm I am? You're really not, Mary. I told you, I'm Maria. Sorry. I was, I was confused. Where are you going? I'm looking for Mary. Have you seen her? Didn't you say she died? Oh yeah, three years ago. But I got a letter from her. She said she was waiting in our special place. <laughs> and that's here? Anyway, I haven't seen her. Is this your only special place? Well, there's the hotel too, I guess. 
The one on the lake? I wonder if it's still there. The Lakeview Hotel? Yeah, it's still there. So, the hotel was your special place, huh? I'll bet it was. Aw, oh, don't get so mad. I was just joking. Anyway, it's not that way. It's this way. You're coming with me? You were just gonna leave me? No, When all these monsters around? No, I just... I'm all alone here. Everyone else is gone. I look like Mary, don't I? You loved her, right? Or maybe... You hated her? Don't be ridiculous. So it's okay? Yeah, fine. Yeah, you might notice during that cutscene that uh, the edges of the map were visible. I uh, kind of needed to turn up the fog a bit there. All right, so we got Maria, and I'm glad that Maria and James are both appropriately breathy for each other. Uh, Maria, I believe, is voiced by Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, who had done a number of uh, songs for not this game, but uh, future Silent Hill games. So she has quite a history with the series herself. All right, just to remind myself. Um, so we're going. Oh, okay. Just make, just got. Just need to make sure that I remember to do things on this particular run. Uh, one thing we need to do is go across the street because here is a doghouse. I mentioned last time that this wouldn't be here on your first run of the game, but it is now, and we're going to examine this. We got the dog key. Found inside a doghouse. No idea where to use it. So we're going to be holding on to this for quite some time. This is what is needed for one of the special endings. So uh, we'll just remember that we have that on us. Next up is the gas station, the Texan gas station. I'm gonna get a pipe. That's not so important. I don't use that much. But what is important is over here, one of these newspaper boxes. There's something again I didn't take here last time. It's the Book of Lost Memories. The name comes from the legend of the people whose land was stolen from them. They called this place the Place of the Silent Spirits. By spirits, they meant not only their dead relatives, but also the spirits that they believed inhabited the trees, rocks, and water around them. According to the legend, this was where the holiest ceremonies took place. But it was not the ancestors of those who now live in this town that first stole the land from these people. There were others who came before. In those days, this town went by another name, but that name is now hopelessly lost in the veils of time. All we know is that there was another name, and that for some reason this town was once abandoned by its residents. Hmm. I wonder why the residents of this town might suddenly just all decide to leave. Anyway, Book of Lost Memories. I think that this was one of the books in uh, Ernest's house. We found this in his study, I think. So, this is another of the items needed for one of the endings, along with the White Chrism. So we're getting a bunch of items now. And next up is Pete's Bolarama. We all know Maria hates bowling, but we got to go inside because we didn't come here to play. Not sure why we did come here, but we grow in, we're going in. I'll wait here. I hate bowling. I didn't come here to play, you know. Hurry back, okay? So what'd you do? Robbery? Murder? Nah, nothing like that. Ha! 
You're just a gutless fatso. What you have to say that for? I thought you said the cops were after you. Nah, I just ran because I was scared. I don't know what the cops are doing. But if you did something bad, why don't you just say you're sorry? Well, I guess I run away a lot too. It's no good. They wouldn't listen. Nobody will ever forgive me. Did you find that lady you're looking for? What's her name? Mary? Eddie? Oh, um, you're... James, we, uh, met in the apartment building? Yeah, I remember, but... Uh... Are you alone here, Eddie? Uh, no. Bye-bye. Wait! Come back! Eddie, let's go after her. Huh? Laura? Why? Laura? Is that her name? Well, that's what she said. This town is full of monsters. How can you sit there and eat pizza? She said she was fine by herself. She said a fatso like me would just slow her down. Ah, forget you. He sounds so dramatic delivering these lines. How can you just sit here and eat pizza? Who is that girl, anyhow? I don't know. All I know is her name. I swear. Delivery on Eddie's lines is kind of odd. I don't know. I don't know who she is. I just, just, that's what she said. Oh, I... No, no, more chewing. More. More. <sighs> Did a little girl run out of here? Yeah. She was too fast for me. Aren't you gonna go after her? Alright. Let's do it. Laura? Laura, if you can hear my chainsaw, come out. She went through there. Is there any other way? Yeah, there is. Right through there. We could go through there, but what if... This kind of disappointed me. They didn't revoice this line. I guess they just forgot about that line. It's no good. It's locked. Back in the Heaven's Night, and uh, there was like a little th little piece of text that I just skipped through the first time we were here. Well, I'm just gonna have to make sure I see it this time. It's these liquor bottles. Don't button through it too fast. What does James have to say? Liquor bottles. I don't need that right now. It's not that I don't drink. In fact, I drink a fair bit. To get away from the pain, the loneliness, but the drinking never changes anything. 
Anyway, I don't need it now. There's something that I have to do. I like James, uh, getting a little Max Payne-ish right there with his thoughts on liquor. Oh, and of course, we can never forget Kiss. Just want to get a neon sign to hang up that just says Kiss. It's not like it's telling you to kiss, it's just reminding you about it. You know, kiss. Into the hospital we go. I mean, we could just save so much trouble just by just skipping over her. Just say, ah, you know, maybe we shouldn't go in there. Maybe we should just keep on moving. But no. No. Alright, so let's see. I want to go in here. Because there's a save point here. Gr oh, okay, I have to, let me go through this. Go through this. Uh, patience. All right, save point. We made it here without a crashing. I like that the overwrite thing is just using the 360's default menu. I don't know, it's kind of... It takes away from the atmosphere a little bit. Let's get this key for the box. You remember one of the keys? For the box with the hair in it. Let's see, then I think we have to go, I think that's, yeah, we, we just go directly now to the stairs and go to the second floor. Alright, here, ma'am, it's got me by surprise. Even though the chainsaw is powerful, it is slow. Fortunately, the nurses are not the fastest themselves. Because you do have to rev up the chainsaw. It takes a little bit to get going. Ow! What's wrong? I just pricked myself. Are you okay? Yeah. Got the, got the needle. Our protagonist sense tells us that we should take that needle with us. We don't know why. Just maybe we should. I hear them still walking around. They, they, they behind us? Hold on. Yeah, okay. No, stop hitting Maria. Do not do that. No, stop. Don't get too close to Maria because now then I have to hit you with the chainsaw and try not to hit Maria with it. But you know, you can. I don't think there's anything down there. You can just hit Maria with that chainsaw and she will die. We're trying to avoid that. Hold on, my controller's rumbling a little bit, so yeah, my health is red. Let's get the carbon paper? I know with the secret I'll give them something to deal with this demon shelter is of no use anymore. He is my instruments. He must follow my orders. Yes, the box will be useless. Now I must not forget it. 7715. That's good. He is the lowest now. I too will be free and he will serve me. I am a genius. No one can stop me. 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 No, no. 
This prose needs a little bit of punctuation, but, you know, at least he gave us the information we needed. We got the lapis eye key, which is another thing that we need for the box. Since we're on hard difficulty, uh, more enemies will be respawning when we go back into like hallways that have monsters. So it's not just about killing monsters, it's about monsters that will come back as we go back and forth. But I do want to pick up any health items I can, because it, really it really is needed. No, don't get don't get near Maria. Please do not do stop doing that with Maria. Please let me just get between you. Let me replenish my health. Eh, pr coming in this room probably was a mistake. Let's see. What do we get in here? A health drink? Yeah. Not really worth coming in here. Something else as well. Shotgun shells. Eh, okay. A little bit of shotgun shells. That's all right. So you can see that the enemies are going to Maria. And it's a problem because she can die. And that just means a game over for us. So got to avoid that from happening. I mean, another reason that they do that is because that will affect the ending. Um, as we mentioned, we were talking about the Maria ending. If you want that Maria ending, then Maria has to take little damage. It's one of the things. Taking damage, Maria taking damage will make it unlikely to get that ending. Yep, oh, I missed. That's the storeroom, I think. Uh, anything else around here? Okay, there is a first aid kit over here. Let's get that. And yeah, nothing over there. The controller's rumbling again. I am taking a whole lot of damage. I have to try to avoid that from happening, because we just need to keep as much health as we can. So we got the examination key, examination room key. The examination room is down on the first floor. It's this one here. So are we looking at anything here? Uh, I don't think we are. The pin number this month is T. Last month it was Z. Bef last month it was X, I'm sorry. Before that, it was Z. But what are they going to do next month? That's all they can express with four numbers. So, on normal, we, saw, we just saw the, um, just straight up what the password was for the third floor um, key code. And this time... It's a little more obscure. They're saying that the pin number is T. 
So what is that? Anyway, does the door to the patient wing really need to have its combination change this often? So what does that mean? We know it's a four-digit number. And they, they gave a... They, which, which, which direction are we facing? Okay, this is it, yeah. It's a four-digit number. They told us what the previous letters were. All we know that the current one is T... And that, that's all, that these letters are all that can be, these letters represent four numbers. So they're saying, well, what's going to be next time? This is all they can represent with, these, with four numbers. Man, please. Oh, they're on both sides of us. You know, let's just, let's just head inside. Let's just head in here. Let's just do this. Okay, uh, so the password is T. What does that mean? Well, the number is actually one, three, two, eight. Okay, let's get in here. All right, so how is it that the letter T represents one, three, two, eight? And the answer is something that I don't know. I looked that up. If you know how the letter T is supposed to represent one, three, two, eight, hey, let me know, because I have no idea. James. <laughs> Wait a minute. <coughs> I'm kind of tired. <sighs> it's just a hangover. You should rest. <sighs> so comfy. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go look for her. For Laura. I'll be back as soon as I can. But as we know, it is not just a hangover. Pick this up. <laughs> James, I want to ask you something. What if... What if you can't find Mary? What do you do? I haven't thought about that. Well, we now we know what he does. Well, Maria, I guess that means it's, you're up. <coughs> I'll be okay soon. <coughs> Did you find Laura? Haven't found her yet. Let me just remind myself of something. Um, well, health. I should I should use health items. All right, I have the roof key. Which means I should head up there. Oh, so many mams everywhere. Also, before I go out on the roof, I should just take up one of these as well. Read the diary from the man. We don't know what happened to this guy, but... He was in a bad way and brought his diary up on the roof. Now let's walk over to this fence over here. And then the master of stealth himself gets the drop on us. The reason I wanted to use a health drink was apparently on the hard difficulty, you can die from that cutscene if you have low health, which is kind of funny. I mean, if any other game tried doing that, it would be... You wouldn't laugh at that, but here it's kind of funny. Okay, that's... 
I think 4918. I think it's what that says. Oh, I blocked. So, sometimes it seems like James blocks attacks with the chainsaw. I don't know if there's a way to deliberately do that, or if it's random. But he's done it. Also, I did take some damage. Look how, you see, how, this is why I say I need to pick up health items, because look how much damage I'm taking here. Anyway, um, let's see. Let's take a look at these numbers that we got here. Um, no, not that. Not the options. I wanted to go to memo. Uh, I wanted to look at carbon paper. Uh, so 7715. All right. We'll use that. Also use this key. And then 7715. And I also said that I thought this looked like, I think it's four, nine, might be a three, but I think it's a nine, four, nine, one, eight, or four, three, one, eight, but I'll try four, nine, one, eight and use this. Okay, it was a nine. Those blood numbers can look kind of odd. There are hairs inside. All right, there are, you know, considering how many enemies are out there, how many... I do have a lot of gun ammo. I probably should start using this because I have a lot more ammo than I have health at this point. Walking all over the dead bodies and kicking. This is still standing. Okay, there we go. So it's like I said, on the hard difficulty, the combat does get a lot more intense. Alright, here's this. Let's combine our hair and our bent needle, as you do, and let's get this. Right, so it's a lot easier to die on hard. Whereas the enemies on normal, kind of, you know, they're not really threatening during the first playthrough. I kind of just sort of ran around them um, without much of a care. You know, just run right next to them, run past, there's no problem. Here, they're very likely to hit you as you're doing that, and they're more likely to just really aggressively pursue an attack. Um, okay, so elevator... I want to get down to the first floor, because that's where Laura is hiding out. Alright, where is she? Maybe she's in that? Yeah, I think she's in this one. Here she is. told me. That big fat blabbermouth. How do you know about Mary? What's the big deal? Why can't you just tell me? You gonna yell at me if I don't? No, I won't. I was
was friends with Mary. We met at the hospital. It was last year. You liar! <laughs> Laura... <clears throat> Fine! Don't believe me! But... last year... Mary was already... I'm sorry, Laura. Anyway, let's go. We can talk about this later. This is no place for a kid. There are all sorts of strange things around here. I can't believe you haven't even gotten a scratch on you. Why should I? Later, okay? But it's really important! What is it? A letter from Mary. What? I want to go get it, is that okay? Yes, yes! Come on, hurry up! Is it in there? What are you doing, Laura? It's... further back. In the desk. Laura? What are you doing? Ha ha, I tricked you. Open the door, Laura. Why should I? I'm a liar, right? Want me to open it? Huh? Huh? Do ya? What's the magic word? Laura? Okay, I guess I won't open it. I think I'll just leave you like this. You snotty little brat! Open up! Why, you... You... Laura! You... We can't use the chainsaw against these guys because you can't like do an overhead swing with it. But we'll use the sh we'll use the shotgun. You know, one thing I like about that cutscene is how when the boss is appearing, you can't really tell what it is. Like you just see a close up of these big lips, and then you see these weird like rectangular things with legs dropping down. And you're like, what? What is this? What's going on? And it's like you see it, and you're still not really sure what this is. Oh no, getting choked by feet. How's my health doing? Eh, health, health's doing all right. Choked again. Okay, one of them's done. Yeah, you wouldn't notice when like they're when you kill one and it goes in the corner and like raises its feet up. That's not how feet bend. How are those feet even bending that way? All right, that's two. Third one's coming down. There, gang. There he is. Yeah, 
There we go. It's time for good good laughs and fun in the other world. But before we leave this room, there is something I need to remember to do. Now let's reload that. My health seems like it's a little red. Okay, make it less red. We picked up the blue gem, the channeling stone at the beginning of the game. In Silent Hill 1, there were some points during the game where you had to lift it up to the night sky uh, when the sky was visible to make things appear, to eventually get the UFO ending. Not as many points in this game that you do that, but this is one of them. I like the little fanfare it does there. In Silent Hill 1, like the, the UFO thing was actually kind of creepy when you would just see lights appear in the sky and there was really no explanation for it. Here, it's like they you, you know what it is. You know that you know what the UFO ending is. So they're not going to make it creepy. They're just going to make this fanfare sound letting you know when uh what this is about. I think we're going to take a little break right now. Going to be back in a few minutes as we continue through the Otherworld Hospital. Continuing on. Oh, let's pick this up down here. With the hospital. Alright, which rooms can we go into? Kind of don't remember. Remember the vaguely about the things that we need to get. Maybe shouldn't have come in here. I'm just thinking maybe I shouldn't have. Oh, you're using so much ammo. You're taking so much ammo. Okay. At least we got a first aid kit. It was all worth it. No, your breaking glass doesn't scare. It's not scary. No, I think we're going to just not go in there. Yeah, I think it's just the elevator that we need to go in. Just checking. Uh, let, I'm using a lot of ammo. Let's just go back to the chainsaw. If we can't, like, if there's a single enemy in front of me, probably just a chainsaw is better. Yeah, this is a room we need to go into, because we have this. The wall. Something's drawn on the wall. Hands are searching for something, or is it a sign of pain? They were reaching for that battery. The battery is the source of their pain, or maybe their salvation. No, thank you. Right, 
right? And the um, the fr- the fridge is in there that we get the ring from, but we cannot open that now. James is not strong enough on his own to open that fridge. sounds of static all around me once again. As usual, let's yep, start at one end. Let's be methodical. Okay, we got something in here. Got handgun bolts and an ampoule. Ampoule, I believe is the correct pronunciation. Here's Maria's room. Maria is not here. Where could Maria be? She was all surprised when everything turned all other world on her. She had to leave. She had to get up and go and say, where's James at? Where is he? I don't see anyone. Oh, there you go. Yeah, got to heal up. get from the storeroom at this point. The box is not in the storeroom right now. Let's see what I get in here. Okay. First aid, handgun, shotgun. That's good. Oh, but nurses are back and that's bad. Just the one nurse, I guess. Um, Let's see. We needed to go down. Yeah, we got the basement key, right? Now let me save here. Let's just keep saving. Right, let's go to the basement. Let's meet Maria, who's going to be real upset at us. That that rat is also upset. Very squeaky rat. And we'll get that key. No, the ring, which is a key. We use it as a key, but it is a ring. James! Mary? Oh, Maria. It's you. I thought you were... Sorry. Anyway, I'm glad you're alive. Anyway? What do you mean, anyway? You don't sound very happy to see me. I was almost killed back there. Why didn't you try to save me? All you care about is that dead wife of yours. I've never been so scared in my whole life. You couldn't care less about me, could you? No, I just... Then stay with me. Don't ever leave me alone. You're supposed to take care of me. 
So, what about Laura? Did you find her? Yeah, but she ran away. We've got to find her. You really seem to care about her. Do you know her? I've never met her before. I just feel sorry for her. She's all alone. And for some reason, I feel like it's up to me to protect her. All we care about is that dead wife of ours. It is the whole premise of the game. Though, I mean, can we really say that I care about my dead wife? I haven't looked at her photo once in this whole playthrough. It's a very agitated rat. All right, let's save again. It's always just, you know, just good to keep saving. All right, so we got that. Now we have Maria, so we can go to the elevator. Go down to the second floor. And open up that fridge with our combined strength. But first, a uh, game show, which is also revoiced. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to another exciting edition of Trick or Treat. Here you either answer the questions correctly and win a great prize, or fail to answer correctly and receive the punishment. It all depends on you. And our lucky, or should I say unlucky, challenger today is James. James Sunderland. Are you ready to play Trick or Treat? Okay, here's your first question. Merry-go-round, haunted house, roller coaster, Ferris wheel, and teacups. Silent Hill is home to a thrilling amusement park that both children and adults love. The question is, what is the name of this amusement park? One, Fantasyland. Two, Silent Hill Amusement Park, 3, Lakeside Amusement Park. Okay, quickly, on to question number two. Silent Hill witnessed a gruesome murder a few years back. A brother and sister were playing in the road when they were attacked and chopped into pieces with an axe. Torn flesh, smashed bones, spattered blood, and finally, what a terrible tragedy! What a gruesome end to such innocent lives! Now, the question. What was the name of the murderer who committed this vile act? One, Walter Sullivan. Two, Scott Fairbanks. Three, Eric Guy. Now, for our third and final question. South of the lake is a deserted old neighborhood called South Bay. From there to Paleville, the central resort area northwest of the lake, there's only one road you can take. Just one road, no more. The third and final question is... What is the name of that road? One, Buckman Road. Two, Rendell Street. Three, Nathan Avenue. Well, that's the last of our questions. Have you got it all figured out? When you know the answers, head to the storeroom on the third floor to collect your prizes. But be careful, if you're wrong. <laughs> well then, everybody, thanks for tuning in. See you again sometime. Bye-bye. What was that? You know, the announcer says that South Vale is a deserted neighborhood. You're telling me that Pete's Bolarama does not draw people down to South Vale? 
I find that hard to believe. I, I think that place is jumping when you're actually in, you know, the real world with actual people. You can't open it? Yeah. Maria, give me a hand here. Come on. You're supposed to be the big man around here. How's a little girl like me supposed to help? <laughs> What's this? <laughs> Not very cute, is it? Here, James, you take it. <laughs> Thanks. All right, we got the ring. Whoop. Over here. All right, head up to floor three. Might as well get our stuff from the storeroom. Okay, no nurses here. That's good. You know, I might, you know, since I do like to show as many things as I can, I might show what happens if you would, were to fail this, but since it's hard difficulty, I would just rather get the stuff inside. All that happens is, like, some, you know, like, the vomit that those one enemies hit you with? All that happens is, like, that comes down from the ceiling and you take some damage. It's not real, it's not, like, a big thing. Oh, got nurses. Got nurses. You hate you hate getting nurses. You don't want to get those. Help. Uh, just thinking about something. I should go to that save point. I should really just do that before going through there. Anyone here? Okay, down all the way down there, so that's fine. It's easy to forget about saving here. Because you just think, oh, what's going to happen next is just basically a cutscene. But no, not really. Not really. Especially on the hard difficulty. You remember I said last time when you're being chased by Pyramid Head, he can kill Maria before you make it to the elevator. And he can do it a lot faster on hard. It's a little strange that if he kills her before you get to the elevator, that that's a game over. But if he kills her after you get to the elevator, you just continue on. You'd think that's kind of odd, but yeah, that's how it works. All right, let's see. Where does he appear exactly? I'm just gonna Maria. I'm gonna look at you and walk backwards. I heard that music. All right, sir, 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 please. Please, sir, I cannot have you do that. Now he's getting me before I can get him. Alright, sir, please stop stabbing my, my wife. Alright, Maria, just, like, run. That'll slow him down for, like, two seconds. Maria, I don't know if you're running. I don't see you running, Maria. Uh, 
Almost, almost, we made it. Open up, James. 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 So if you want to go back and watch that scene, you might notice that Pyramid Head doesn't actually uh, animate or attack Maria during that scene. He just stands there. Uh, we just save again. And there was no sound effect when she got stabbed because he didn't get stabbed. He didn't move. My controller is rumbling. Yeah, there we go. Yep, Abyss, we know about it. March forward through that Abyss. Here's a letter and a wrench. Actually, no, here's just a, a key to get out of the hospital. Here's where the letter and wrench are. Letter wrench. And also go to Park. And also go to the Historical Society. And there goes there goes Laura without a care in the world. Our time in the hospital ultimately purposelessness, purposeless, useful, no, not there's no purpose. There was nothing, to, no reason. Laura was never in any in any danger to begin with. Mary, are you really out there waiting for me? I'm sorry, I forgot which version I'm playing. Mary, are you really out there waiting for me? And of course, the, the nurses are now out. It's nurses gone wild out in the streets. You won't believe what these nurses do. Well, you literally won't. I mean, they'll try to kill you if you get close to them. Alright, let's head over to that one locked door, which will take us back to the eastern side of Southvale. Once again, it's hard to believe that this they, they would consider this place to be a deserted part of town. It clearly has a large and thriving nurse population. Myself. Uh, yeah, it's this way. So, I actually was kind of surprised there that Mary wasn't killed before I made it to the elevator, because she was probably on the verge of death there. This pyramid had hit her a few times. 
the reason that well the reason that I was sort of messing around with him at the start there was because hitting him with the chainsaw does slow him down. Not not for long, but he does get slowed down by it. You could see that in the fight against him in the apartments that uh like it has sort of a slow motion effect on him for a few seconds after you chainsaw him. I didn't expect that we would get hit a bunch of times while I was doing that, but, you know, it happened. And as we go through here, I believe we now get to the RV. Yeah, here it is. Let me get this first aid kit. The note in the RV says that we should go to Bar Neely's, of course. Um, there's something else in here. It's not here the first time you play through the game, so last time I did not pick it up. But it's this, the hyper spray. Let's take a look at it. Suspicious spray can, effects unknown. So what it does, what it depends on is how many stars you get in your rating after you beat the game. So I have... Is that white or yellow? I think it's white. So if it's white, I believe that means that it will stun enemies if I hit him with it. I think if you get maybe... It might be if you get a perfect 10-star rating, the hyper spray is upgraded so that it kills anything with, uh, with one spray. I think that's correct. I've never actually gotten like the fully powered up hyper spray, but I think that's what it does. So there are like different power levels that the spray has depending on what your rating was. Like, see? Okay, this one, let's do this. Are you stunned? Yeah, it's stunned. So you can do that if there are enemies that you want to get by without getting hit, like this nurse. Probably too far away. That was probably too far away. Yeah, so now she's not moving. It only lasts for a few seconds, I think. I like how James covers his nose when he sprays it. It's just like a nice little a nice little uh, attention to detail on that. You're also telling me that in South Vale, people are not going to Gonzales Mexican re Mexican uh, what is that? Gonzales is Mexican. I forget what that says. I can't read it in the dark. Restaurant. This is the rest of the restaurant. It is Mexican open seven days a week. You think this would be drawing the people? Going north to the, um, okay, we want to get to Rosewater Park, so, right, I have to go here, turn here, head towards this way, to where the Door of Darkness is, that opens into Nightmares, which just means, like, the west side of South Vale for some reason.
let's head up to the park so we can get the key. Oddly, there are no monsters in the park itself. I guess it's just not a popular hangout spot for the monsters. When you have four-legged four -legged mannequins and violent nurses tr figuring out where they want to just hang out during the night, I guess they just want to come to the park. Maybe this is just a tourist attraction. This is where the rubes come. Like, the actual townies don't bother with Rosewater Park. You think it would be really inconvenient to the people who work at the historical society that they can't find their key to open the front door? They're like, where did where did the key go? I think the director of the hospital had it. Then you ask him, "Where's the key?" And he tries, and he has to tell you, "Well, one of my patients um, took the key and buried it somewhere." I'm sorry. It's uh, that was the only, I know that was the only key, and it's like you can't get in there without it. But well, look, the patients are going to do what they're going to do, right? I'm gonna have to find a locksmith somewhere in Silent Hill who can make a new key. I'm sure that on one of the town storefronts somewhere in one of these games there must have been a locksmith. Here we are. One thing I do want to notice before we head downstairs. Right. Over here, there's a special item. The Obsidian Goblet. Ancient-looking goblet carved from pure obsidian. Let's examine it. A snake is carved into its stem. So this is the third item that we need for the rebirth ending. Nothing we can do with it now. And as we go down these stairs, we might notice that there's, some, there's something kind of missing here.
It's very quiet as we go down these stairs. The uh, the the horn, the ominous horn that we hear going down the stairs is, is not here. Um, what do I have? What should I be using? Uh, I have enough bullets. Let me just use some of these. It should be noted that a lot of the things like that, like the missing sound, those aren't like deliberate decisions. Those are just bugs. Oh, hold on. Oh, sir, please. Can I go in here? Let me remind myself of that. Yeah, I can. There's just some there's some bullets, some pictures in here. Ah, we don't need those pictures though. And of course, um, any bugs in this version were never fixed because it would have cost money to patch a 360 game, and Konami's not about that money-spending lifestyle. You know that. Konami's all about, let's do a thing, but how can we do the thing without actually paying anyone for it? That's their whole thing. Let's find the wall, which is not just a wall. Oh, this one's different. What if we take a chainsaw to the wall? It works quite well. I'm going to chainsaw a hole in this brick wall. Here's the key, which makes our flashlight go out. And uh, we're going to use... Let's first use a health thing. There we go. I've used a thing of health. Now let us use the battery. Bugs. Oh no. Full of bugs. Only two buttons are lit up. So I guess that kind of like reduces the combination. How many uh, buttons it could be. Well, how many possibilities there could be. There we go. Something I had noticed while side-eyeing the chat is a conversation about uh, the code that was available to use when the HD collection was made. Yes, it is said that the final code of Silent Hill 2 was lost. Um, which is why the HD collection is so weird, because it was a uh, non-final code that they had to work with, unfortunately. Um, because when it, came, when it comes to archiving code, um, you know, not every, a lot of Japanese video game companies didn't exactly do that in times gone by. Ch things have changed now, but back then... Killing a person ain't no big deal. Just put the gun to their head. Pow. You... you killed him? But, but it wasn't my fault. He made me do it. Calm down, Eddie. Just tell me what happened. That guy, he, he had it coming. I didn't do anything. He just came after me. Besides, he was making fun of me with his eyes, like that other one. Just for that, you killed him? What do you mean, just for that? Eddie, you can't just kill someone because of the way they looked at you. 
Oh yeah? Why not? Till now I always let people walk all over me. It's just like that stupid dog. He had it coming too. Eddie. <sighs> I was just joking, James. He was dead when I got here. Honest. Anyway, I gotta run. <laughs> oh, you're going out there alone? Yeah. Eddie? Something about the... Like, just the, uh, the tone of Eddie's voice. It's kind of making me... Kind of makes me... It kind of sounds a little Bill and Ted-ish, maybe. Or sort of like Keith from Deadly Premonition. Just sort of like a little bit of a... A twang to the to the voice. He was totally making fun of me with his eyes, FBI. I had to kill him. Uh, let's see. Use the chainsaw on these guys tends to get me sprayed on, so let me just use the handgun. No, Want to pick? Yeah, there we go. Well, like. Killing a person ain't no big deal. <laughs> that guy's crawling all around. Just put the gun to their head and pow, FBI. get our extremely powerful lighter which we need to solve the puzzle you remember what the puzzle is right the puzzle is you have to get the handle to open up the trap door but how do you replace the handle Of course, you don't want to forget to go into this room because this is where the rifle is. You could you could just easily just leave this uh, this area without actually taking that. Same thing in Silent Hill One. Actually, it was pretty. It wasn't. It was pretty easy to not notice where the rifle was and just leave without taking it. Not this one. Let's see. I think I need to go down there into the showers and then down there to a, uh, a cell hallway. So much vomit coming out from these cells. Let's see, is there anything I should... Oh, then, oh, 
That's right, there was someone out of a cell. Not something I... I don't think there's anything I have to pick up here. No, there's the wax doll. That's right, the wax doll is in one of these cells. There we go, it's this one. I also should check my health. Just gonna hang out in this old decrepit cell, chugging, and, chugging health drinks. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I want to go up, up there to that other hallway. Oh. Didn't realize there was someone right there. Let's use our plates. Can you, like, combine them to use them all at once? Let's see. Oh, yeah. That works. So that's just James's voice yelling there. I don't think it was his voice in with the original voice acting. It didn't sound like him yelling. to get to that trap door. Alright. So you know what we're doing here. Gotta figure out a way to open up this heavy trap door lid. And the only way you can do it is by, com is by combining a wax doll with a lighter and a horseshoe. Let's head into the morgue. And jump into a pit. I mean, that's, how, that's what you do. It's a tradition. When you leave a morgue, you have to jump into a bottomless pit. It's just a thing, it's just a thing that we do. We, um, I don't know where, where the tradition comes from. And further down we go. Of course, this this run through of the game, even though we know what we're doing, we know where we're going, we know what we have to find and what puzzles to solve. There is a certain overarching feeling of tension knowing that the game could crash at any second. Who knows when it could happen? It could happen in the elevator right now. There's no save point in this elevator. As we're going down the elevator, there should just be a whole bunch of red squares on the wall taunting us with save points that we can't reach. But here's a save point right here. 
Actually, that just occurs to me. They there is no point in any Silent Hill game where they have a fake save point, do they? That seems like something that they could do as like a some sort of scare, but I don't think they ever do that. All right, let's head down and get uh, Pyramid Head's knife. I don't know if I'll I don't know if I'll actually use it, since the melee weapon I have been using is the chainsaw. But you know, we're here. We might as well go get it. to the wrong one. <laughs> Getting so much vomit in the face. Alright, this is the wire door. I missed the, uh, the ladder I need to go down. It's not... No, it's, that's... No, it, it's, they're, uh... I want a dead end. No, there's like there's a hall there's a hallway. This there we go. I took so much vomit in the face. Let me check my health. Make my health a little bit better. You know, I seem to remember the first mm, more vomit. I seem to remember the first time I played this game when I was running around like these uh, these catacombs with like the with the water. In the caves, I do seem to remember running into Pyramid Head down there. And playing it now, it hasn't happened. I don't know if I'm remembering that wrong, but I thought he was down there. Anyway, here's this room with the doors. Let me take a look at something. Um, where would I want this to, to end up? I can't see above me. So on hard, hard puzzle difficulty, I think this is random. Just looking at where the doors are. Like, I think the configuration of this rotating room is random. Okay, that's not it. We have that over there. Two doors on the floor. What I'm looking for is like... A two doors that are across from each other because then you can you can tell that oh that's those are the two doors that we need to get into position Did I already do the green face facing me? I might have. No, I think I did yellow eyes facing me. Here's red eyes. Let's see. Door there, door there, door on floor. Okay, I can see like there's a door up there. Not across from it, though. Door up there. Not across from it, though. Oh, there we go. All right, forget trying to identify where the doors are. We just I just happened to get here. That's fine. That's fine. It's fine. Oh, that's not how that's supposed to look. You're alive? Maria, I, I thought that thing killed you. Are you are you hurt bad? Not at all, silly. 
Maria. That thing. It stabbed you. There was blood everywhere. Stabbed me? What do you mean? It, it chased us to the elevator and, and then... James, what are you talking about? Just before. Don't you remember? James, honey, did something happen to you? After we got separated in that long hallway? Are you confusing me with someone else? <laughs> you were always so forgetful. Remember that time in the hotel? Maria? You said you took everything, but you forgot that videotape we made. I wonder if it's still there. How do you know about that? Aren't you Maria? I'm not your Mary. So, you're Maria? I am. If you want me to be. All I want from you is an answer! It doesn't matter who I am. I'm here for you, James. See? I'm real. Don't you want to touch me? I... I don't know. Come and get me. I can't do anything through these bars. Okay. Just stay right there. I'll be there soon. And James just takes off. It's got to get there as fast as possible. You know, whenever I hear the um, Troy Baker's take on all I want from you is an answer, I always have to laugh at it because the first thing I think of is that video that um, Bob Vids made when this first came out, which is like just a parody of the new voices. So I, I think that might have been... I had not really heard much of the new voices at that point. That one's a dead end. This way, I think. Yeah, so that was this part in the game where, like, you're running down into the catacombs here. I distinctly remember running into Pyramid Head down here, and it, like, back when I first played the PS2 version. And as, I, as I've been playing the PC version and now the 360 version here, it's never happened. So I don't know if I'm just imagining that. So much vomit in the face. Like, if this was a movie adaptation, it would be so disgusting because whoever's playing James is just constantly getting vomit in the face. Alright, here we go. Time to meet Angela uh, and her dad. So, of course, Angela's been apparently been through quite a bit in her own uh, personal Silent Hill journey. Last time we saw her, she was depressed in the apartments, and now we're going to find her down here in the catacombs. Daddy, please don't. In the flesh room.
So even though I called this boss an angry door, it's supposed to look like a bed. And on, on the bed, you can see, like, writhing figures. It's not too difficult to, to tell what it's all supposed to represent, considering uh, what we've been learning about Angela. Um, actually, let me try to chainsaw the door. And there we go. Chainsaw seems to actually work very well against it. then oh i see you're trying to be nice to me right i know what you're up to it's always the same thing you're only after one thing no it's not true at all you don't have to lie go ahead and say it or you could just force me <laughs> beat me up like, like he always did you only care about yourself you disgusting pig! Angela. Don't touch me! You make me sick. You said your wife, Mary, was dead, right? Yes. She was ill. Liar! I know about you. You didn't want her around anymore. You probably found someone else. <laughs> That's... ridiculous. I never... You know, that line is a little bit curious. I wonder, just like we found a newspaper on the ground that talked about the death of her father, um, I wonder if Angela's been finding, like, notes or such about James. Like, did she find a newspaper uh, talking about that uh, Mary has disappeared? Like, where, where did this terminally ill patient go and her husband has also disappeared? So it's like she was reading the newspaper article about James. He's like, yeah, I, I know what you're about. I don't know what you did with that wife, but you're, you're bad news, James. Like, I don't know if that's what happened, but... It would make sense if the other characters are reading notes about us. Here's the puzzle with the hanged men. Uh, this is worded differently. A different kind of puzzle. Let's read it. We may visit death upon the head of the sinner, but to what avail? In the name of retribution, we took part in a bitter comedy this day. You, hanging as you do, by your neck, unforgiven and cursed by all. Five of them committed crimes, six went out for a drink and were captured there. Only one of them was innocent, but they knew not that. 
The bloodstains remaining are proof of their guilt, trodden upon and thus created. They are the paths to hell, or the void. The white bandages stained with crimson, it remains upon the scorched black earth, the whispered cries of the maiden. They are but a meaningless contract. They are also signs of guilt. But one of them was done without reason. It was done out of fear, out of ripe imagination. Spitting alone at the end of a rope, it is nothing less than a disgrace to us all. So this is a bit more wordy, a bit more complicated. Let's go over that again. So five of them committed crimes, but one of them was innocent. We know that. Okay, here's some clues. The white bandages stained with crimson. So one of the uh, criminals hanging in the other room it was convicted of bodily injury, I think. So that could represent, you know, an white bandages stained with crimson. Someone's bleeding. So that could, that could mean that the person convicted of bodily injury is guilty. There's also murder. Murder could result in bandages stained with crimson. So that could also mean maybe that the murderer is guilty. The remains upon the scorched black earth. So that sounds like a fire. So one of the uh, hanging criminals is an arsonist. So that would mean the arsonist is also guilty. The arsonist was the innocent one on normal, remember. So this one's saying that the arsonist is guilty. The whispered cries of the maiden. Uh, so I, I think that is referring to kidnapping because there's a, one of the criminals is a kidnapper. So I guess that is kidnapping. I guess that represents that. They are but a meaningless contract. Okay, so meaningless contract. One of the hanging criminals is a swindler. So a con man. I guess that's referring to meaningless contract. There are also signs of guilt. One of them was done without reason. So someone's innocent. So five of the, I've mentioned five criminals that are going to be guilty. And one of them, the one that is innocent was not mentioned. So we have to go look at these look at these people. What were they convicted of? Kidnapping. So this one's the kidnapper. This one's the swindler. This one's bodily injury. Thievery. So, in those clues, there wasn't anything about a thief. This one's arson. And this one's murder. So, the lower right is the thief. And by the way, you want to see what happens if we fail this? If we got it right, then the body would be gone, and the key would be there. But oh no, all six people are still here. And now we have a bunch of friends out here. Look at all these vomiting friends. That's, just, that's all that happens if you fail that. It's annoying. Not that big of a deal. So we said that this was, th this was Thief. So let's pull the Thief's noose. Yeah, so the thief was indeed the innocent man. Alright, just to make sure, we do have to go through that hallway one more time, right? Yeah, to get to the locked room. Alright, let me replenish some health. Four of those, nine of those, four of these. Eh, it's not doing too badly.
and we need to use our key of the persecuted. The dog key won't work, of course. The dog key will not unlock these handcuffs. We've been carrying this dog key for a while, and we have not used it. And it'll still be a while yet before we do use it. And so, of course, now we know that the reason that Maria appears to have, like, this, uh... It looks like her skin's rotting because, uh, represents Mary's condition as she died. Though we don't know that, of course, as we're playing through the game. Right, let's find what we can pick up here. Gasp, my own grave, how could this be? All right, now it's time to go face Eddie. Let's see how this chainsaw works against him. Busted my balls. You fat, disgusting piece of shit. You make me sick. Fat ass. You're nothing but a waste of skin. You're so ugly, even your mama don't love you. Well, maybe he was right. Maybe I am nothing but a fat, disgusting piece of shit. But you know what? It doesn't matter if you're smart. Dumb. Ugly, pretty, it's all the same once you're dead. And a corpse can't laugh. From now on, if anyone makes fun of me, I'll kill him. Just like that. Eddie, have you gone nuts? I knew it. You too. You're just like him, James. Oh. Hey, I didn't mean anything. Don't bother. I understand. You've been laughing at me all along, haven't you? Ever since we first met. I'll kill you, James. I'm not really sure what the, the sounds of those chimes were about. <coughs> I'm going to be following Eddie with my chainsaw. 
Was not able to get him though. Oh, there we go. Poking him. Gonna poke ya. Poking ya. He just could not handle the chainsaw. And my health's doing fine. Right, let's head on in. Do you know what it does to you, James? When you're hated, kicked on. Spit on, just cause of the way you look. After you've been laughed at your whole freaking life! That's why I ran away after I killed the dog. Ran away like a scared little girl. Yeah, I killed that dog. It was fun. It tried to chew its own guts out. Finally died all curled up in a ball. Then he came after me. I shot him, too, right in the leg. He cried more than the dog. <laughs> He's gonna have a hard time playing football on what's left of that knee. You think it's okay to kill people? You need help, Eddie. Don't get all holy on me, James. This town called you too. You and me are the same. We're not like other people. Don't you know that? Let's party. Oh, shot me before I could do anything. Let me check my health. You know, this fight went so fast the first time. Let's uh, try to maybe do it more properly. So, okay, we have these like pieces of meat. Oh, he's running at me. These pieces of meat hanging around. <laughs> oh no, the chase is on. You can use these meat to, like, block uh, gunshots. So if Eddie's trying to shoot you, then you can just hide behind one to prevent getting shot. But sometimes he just runs right at you. Yeah. Yeah, but I can shoot the meat and, it, like, it bumped into him. And I guess that does damage? He didn't. He seemed like he didn't like it. Impressive that he's able to take a rifle shot right to the face, though. He's running. Oh. So that's kind of how the fight is supposed to go, I suppose. Uh, but we have the chainsaw, so we might as well use it. How did he realize that my one weakness was bullets? I probably should heal. That did a lot of damage. Nope, don't... Don't do that. Go back here and heal. Oh, he got me through that. I guess it was... I guess I must have been standing right to the side. My health is still okay. He reloads pretty fast. Punch versus chainsaw. Who could win? Oh, punch won. Punch was stronger than chainsaw. Who would have thought we brought a cha we brought our chainsaw and then he brought his bare fist. But the power of the chainsaw could not compare to the to the incredible punching power of Eddie Dombrowski.
Oh, he's out of here. LK just pushed me out of the way to get out. And so the chainsaw does a lot of damage, but of course the problem is is that Eddie seems it seems like Eddie is capable of doing a whole lot of damage himself. Like with that. Chainsaw this meat, Eddie, and if you happen to walk in front of the meat, it's not my fault. He's a master of, st of stealth, sneaking up behind me. Yeah, this is a bit slow. Eddie is capable of hitting me before I can hit him. Maybe we should just use the big knife again. He's taking a lot of hits from that. Eddie's determination is giving him so much HP in this fight. Eddie, I know you're hiding behind that. Eddie, you're not fooling anyone. Eddie's low on health. Is this what he does if he's low on health? Uh. I don't think he's anywhere near me. Oh, my knife just bounces off the meat. He's not staying in range long enough. He's poking and just getting away. He knows my weakness. He knows that my attacks are powerful but slow. There we go. He had so much health.
Eddie? Eddie? I, ki I killed a human being. A human being. Mary. Did you really die three years ago? Mary, if I could have killed a human being, maybe you didn't die three years ago. All right, and we are out of the historical society and almost out of health, so, you know, let's... Drink up our health drinks. There we go. And let's save. And I think that we're going to say goodnight. Um, so we, we made some progress tonight. Uh, getting to the end of the historical society. And hey, it didn't crash! You know, the game seemed to run fine. Even though there were, you know... A little few bugs in terms of things getting displayed or maybe some sounds being played. But the game was functional and didn't just freeze. So, good job, Silent Hill HD Collection. You let us play through you and hear some of the wonderful replacement voice acting. Uh, as we have now heard the entire performance of Eddie. Though Angela still has one scene to go. And of course, Maria still has some more. Um, so with us reaching the end of the historical society, that means next time, I expect, will be the final for Silent Hill 2 as we go to the hotel, uh, and James will discover the answers to all questions, and also we will be getting the three special endings. Oh yeah, that water is weird, isn't it? There's some kind of a weird effect happening there. Well, we'll see more of that water next time as we get on the boat to go to the hotel. Odd-looking water effect in this version. Odd-looking water effect. As far as those special endings go, we do have the blue gem, which is needed for the UFO ending, and we got one sighting of UFOs. We have uh, three items for the rebirth ending, and we have the dog key, which we need for the dog ending. So these are the endings we're going to be going for next time as we finish up Silent Hill 2. I'll see you then.